I planned out this entire video thinking this was still episode three. It's not. Okay, episode four of the dim interrogation. Let's go. <sighs> or not. Again, I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. Marlon Orellana asks, hey, I'm sorry for the random question, that's okay, but does SLI help with video editing to 1070s? This is dependent on the application. For example, Premiere Pro does support multiple GPUs. SLI though is not actually officially tested by Adobe, but playback is only done by one graphics card, while rendering and exporting are handled by two or more. This is based on what I've been reading, but I do plan on doing more detailed tests on this sometime in the near to I might be on back order future. Softa77 says, I've got a question for you. Ever considered going ultra wide instead of multiple monitors? If not, then why? If you have, what is stopping you? <sighs> I thought about it, and my issue for the moment is that I actually lack the desk space. One ultra wide isn't enough. Two would leave me with a weird bezel in the middle unless I mess with the symmetry, and three takes up too much space. And I also don't have the proper mounting arm for an ultra wide, and I feel like the benefit of being able to snap windows to certain parts of each regular monitor is something that's um, more beneficial to have for me personally. It's something I'm keeping in the back of my mind though, like until way down the line. I may make the switch someday, but today is not that day. Largely because each ultra wide would be roughly 700 US dollars at a minimum unless I make certain compromises that I'm probably not willing to make. Window Liquor Limited 2 says, Damn you, Dim. EVGA, Corsair, best PSUs labeled by these brands are made by OEM partners, Seasonic, Superflower, Antec, period. My point of view, if you look at your build and you find components considered as highlights, PSU should be one of them. It's like feeding athletes junk food and expect him to perform top tier. No, not how that works. It's like forcing your junkie to sniff crystal meth and expect him to last. No. You have to provide that snow what- okay, you know what, and he's- you get the point. Mr. Window Liquor is correct. I was just listing off names that you typically see on like a shelf or on an Amazon page, but he is 100% right. EVGA, Corsair, Thermaltake, Silverstone, Cooler Master, and so on, they get their power supplies from OEMs or original equipment manufacturers like uh, Seasonic or Channel Well or Flextronics, um, Enhance, and you get the point. And I also agree that the power supply is often the unsung hero of a PC build. Take pride in your power supply. It is the blood of your body, the breast milk for your baby, the life juice of your loins. Don't steal your baby's boob milk. <laughs> and on the topic of power supplies, 557 even? 57 says, I have a 650 watt EVGA G1 running 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, two SSDs and two air fans, and a 240 millimeter deep cool radiator. Really thinking of buying the 1080 Ti, but the only problem is I noticed it uses both six and eight pin connectors with the 650 watts suffice. The recommended wattage for a full system that includes a 1080 Ti is 600 watts. I am pretty sure that's a safe figure. I think depending on your other components, you can get away with 550 watts or so, but at that point, another few bucks will get you the 600 water. So you might as well play it safe. If you're willing to blow $700 on a graphics card, then a 600 watt power supply should be well within your budget. That being said, 650 watts is gold. Or titanium. Or bronze. Hmm? Next question is from It's Retinas, and he or she asks, Guys, I'm using an FX8350 for my new build. Is it still good? Both AMD and Intel are now on DDR4, so if you go with the FX8350, you'll be stuck with DDR3, which leaves you with very few upgrade paths down the line. If you understand that, then it's still a decent processor. It's, it'll still perform the same as it always has, but if you ever want to change anything in the future, I recommend either going with a cheaper 6th or 7th generation Intel processor, or waiting until Q2 to see if AMD's R5 series processors will disrupt Intel's mainstream i5 and i7 CPUs. I found the 8350 on Amazon and Newegg for right around 140 bucks, and even though newer will be more expensive, I still think it's in your best interest to walk towards the DDR4 door. That way, if you do decide to upgrade your processor later, you won't have to swap the entire platform out. Chef asks, can you suggest anything us new PC newcomers should be afraid of? PC part genocide, faulty parts or screws, and the stuff that nobody tells you about, like thermal paste, whatever the hell that is. Okay, so I left a huge wall of text in his in response to his comment, but I'll try to keep it a little more under control here. If you're new to building PCs, the first big headache you can avoid is sticking to a reputable power supply manufacturer. If you're not sure, you're usually safe by going to a site like Newegg or Amazon and checking on ratings. If you see a power supply with like 500 ratings and over 4.4 stars or something, your odds are pretty good. 
If you have one GPU or less, a 600 watt power supply is more than enough to handle your entire computer. With two graphics cards, 1000 watts is my safe zone, but you'll be able to drop as low as probably around 800. I will be testing this more in the near or distant future, so you can look out for that. When putting your computer together, don't forget the IO shield. It's this rectangular metal piece that goes in the back of your case where your motherboard ports stick out. Building your computer just to find out that you have to take it apart to put that bit back in is the most annoying thing next to NPCs that don't know when to stop talking and me when I'm hungry. When you're installing your heatsink, some companies will pre-apply thermal paste and some will not. For the companies that do not, they oftentimes have a plastic film covering the bottom plate. Be sure to remove that, otherwise your computer will explode. No, it won't, but you will get alarmingly high temperatures. And then after that's removed, you can apply a small amount of thermal paste to the processor and install the heatsink as per the instructions it came with. Other than that, you'll just want to keep an eye out on compatibility. PCPartPicker.com is a good website that will usually let you know when something you've chosen will cause an issue with something else. I may or may not do an in-depth video on selecting and building a computer, but that would take a long time. Not because it's like particularly complicated, but just because there's a lot of information that I would have to cover, and I want to make sure I've got all my ducks in a row before I release anything, and it would probably take me the better half of a hella long time to script and shoot and edit. If you have anything more to add here, then do leave it in the comments and bump it up with a thumb so other people can see your contribution. Now these next questions are more about me and less about computers, so if you don't really give a damn about what I think, feel free to swoosh on out. I think I'm going to try to structure these videos kind of like computer stuff and then Steven stuff from now on so that people know what to expect and when. Anyway, Joshua Breyer is the goddamn battery just died. I don't know if I'm in focus anymore, but goddamn it, it's late and I want to go to bed, so we're going to roll with it. Anyway, Joshua Breyer says, I was just watching your headphones review and you played a clip of music and that music, I, I don't remember the song, but it's by a band called Forever in Combat. They're relatively new. They do hardcore things. He wants to know what kind of tunes I listen to, and it is pretty much anything similar to that clip. <laughs> I listen to a lot of bands like Asking Alexandria and Parkway Drive, A Day to Remember, The Devil Wears Prada, Bullet for My Valentine, Crown the Empire, etc. I'm also pretty open to other things, so I can listen to a lot of different stuff and like kind of jam out to whatever. So yeah. Next question is from BMWSU. Oh, you dropped the gameplay. Uh, he says, so you've mentioned that you used to make gameplay videos, if I'm not mistaken, and you're not. But I don't know if I've ever heard you talk about games past whether or not something is good for gaming. What kind of games do you enjoy the most, and what kind of games have you been playing recently? Uh, so games I enjoy the most are usually RPGs of some sort. Examples of this would be like Shadow of Mordor and Rise of the Tomb Raider, or any Tomb Raider, really. Uh, the Witcher, Just Cause, Grand Theft Auto, Final Fantasy. Uh, I just started playing Horizon Zero Dawn and that is really freaking cool. Um, I also like horror games like Resident Evil and Outlast and Amnesia and general indie horrors, even though they're really bad sometimes. And then there's also classics like Crash Bandicoot. That's getting remade, so I'm really excited about that. I'm also waiting for um, Nier Automa Automata, Automata to come out, which will be in like three, to three or four days or something. Maybe, maybe less by the time this video gets out, but I'm waiting for that. That'll be fun. So those are all the questions that I have for today, but I do notice that YouTube is notifying me less and less regarding comments. And then I gotta go digging through my, my comment feed to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I don't have time to go do that every single day. So if you leave me something and you find that I haven't responded in 24 hours or so, you can go ahead and shoot a question over to a little dim at gmail.com and I'll try to answer you there. Just put something in the email subject like question in all caps. Uh, please try to refrain from leaving a comment and then sending me an email if you don't hear back in like five minutes though. If emails make you uncomfortable, there's always Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and I'm usually pretty good at responding there, so give that a shot. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Leave me questions that you might have here and I'll, it'll help me structure the next video. If you want to help support me and the time I put into doing these things, my Patreon link is down below, but feel free to ignore it if you have something on your wish list. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. Seasonic Superflower Antec period. Uh. Wow. Okay. I thought that was me. And it wasn't me. That was him. That was more him. That was, that's why that didn't make sense. EVGA, Corsair, best P. 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 S. U. S. But he is 100% right. EVGA. E, e. Don't steal your baby's boob, bil, boob, boob milk. Yeah, that's hard to say. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, two, two, 
Damn it. So close, but not really. Two air fans and a deep cool 240. I just realized that the camera's not low enough to catch my movement, so I'm probably doing weird stuff like this, and you have no idea what's going on down there. That being said, 650. That being said, 60. 6. 650. If you're new to building PCs, the first thing is to scratch your nose because it's really damaged. If you see a power supply with like 500 ratings and over 4.4 stars or something, your odds, your, your uh, odds, I mods. So if you don't really give a da get, give it, give a damn, give a damn, give a damn. So that's all I have. Nope. <laughs> that's not all I have. That's all the questions I have. <laughs>